and welcome to today's webinar. My name is Tyler Reed, and I'm the Manufacturing Application Manager here at Go Engineer. Today's topic is going to be CAMWorks and SOLIDWORKS and how the two programs work together. This webinar is being recorded live, which means you can hear me, but I can't hear you. So if you have questions at any point during the next 20 to 30 minutes, go ahead and type those into the chat box and we'll address them as they come and at the end. This is also being recorded and will be available on Go Engineer's YouTube page within the week. So to start things off, we're gonna be looking at CAMWorks and some things that we can do within SOLIDWORKS to help us program parts quickly. And also, some situations that we can get ourselves into as we're programming parts and making edits to those parts and how to deal with those situations. So I'm gonna be jumping back and forth between CAMWorks and SOLIDWORKS quite a bit here, uh, sometimes purposely trying to break the model and uh, we'll see how it goes. So I have a typical part here. And if you've used SOLIDWORKS or CAMWorks, this should all look pretty familiar. This is some sort of flange for a differential. And this is a part that in all likelihood would be cut on two different machines. We'd probably take a, a stock piece of bar stock and uh, cut it on a lathe to a rough shape and then we'd move it over to a mill and do a lot of the holes. And so that's kind of the scenario I'm gonna walk through here. We're gonna focus on the milling side. The first thing I would normally do inside CAMWorks is I'd choose a machine, we'll be in a mill machine, and I would set up my stock. Now, CAMWorks has a few different options for creating stock, and we're just gonna be looking at one of the newer ones in a bit here. What I first want to do is get some features on this part. So we're gonna run the automatic feature recognition on this, and CAMWorks is gonna look at the faces of the model and try to identify two and a half axis machinable features. In this file, we're gonna find quite a few holes uh, a lot of these holes have countersinks on them. And we're going to find some circular pockets that are not needed because most likely we would be cutting these on the lathe beforehand. And CAMWorks doesn't know that they've been cut, so it tells you that they're there and it's going to be kind of up to us to filter the results and get rid of those. Okay, so what it delivered was two setups. A setup is a direction of machining. From one setup, it has a countersunk hole group, a circular pocket, and a countersunk hole group on the outer flange. And then from the opposite direction, again, some circular pockets, what we call a multi-stepped hole, which I have a whole nother YouTube video on if you're curious about those, and our countersunk hole group. So I'm gonna get rid of the circular pockets. We're not gonna be cutting those. So I just highlight and hit delete on those. And we have some countersunk holes. We're gonna go ahead and generate an operation plan and generate a toolpath on here. So we have some toolpath on these holes now. That was fairly quick, fairly painless. When I go to simulate this, what we notice here is that our stock representation of the part is not accurate, it's just a block. And so that's gonna be the first thing that we deal with inside SOLIDWORKS. So new in CAMWorks 2015 is the ability to use another part file or a configuration within the same part file as your stock material. So with some SOLIDWORKS skills, we can come over to the SOLIDWORKS configuration tab. We can add a configuration. We'll name it stock. And we can start suppressing some features that wouldn't be present as the part came off of the lathe. So now that that geometry has been simplified, we'll switch back over to our default configuration and read it in as our stock. With this last option here, 
You can see we can select a part file. That would be if we were going to use a different part file for our current part. And within the current part, we can choose a configuration and I can choose the one called stock. So now you can see the teal preview of the stock is the exact shape. And now when we go to simulate the part, we get a much better simulation. So that's one of the first tricks in the SOLIDWORKS CAMWORKS connection here is using configurations in the SOLIDWORKS side to control the CAMWORKS stock. The next thing we're going to look at are edits to the SOLIDWORKS file. Edits happen to files all the time, especially if you're using a CAM software kind of internal to a group and you're going through many revisions on a part, your part's likely going to change as you program it, as you cut it, and as you test it. So with SOLIDWORKS and CAMWORKS, what we can do is come into the SOLIDWORKS file, make some edits to the part, and then jump back over to CAMWORKS, and ideally, CAMWORKS is gonna pick up the changes that we make. Now, how well it picks up the changes is gonna depend on how we've created our features in the first place, and the complexity of those changes that we make. So for example, if we were to come in and change a hole size, we'll go into the hole wizard. Instead of three quarter inch holes, we will do something like a, like a half inch hole. We'll make sure we keep our near side and far side countersinks. So now the model's changed. When we come back over to CAMWorks, it's gonna ask us what type of rebuild do we wanna do? So it's noticed that the part file has changed. The options that we have are full, light, and cancel, and help. So full is going to rerun the feature recognition. It takes a deeper look at the changes that have been made, and it's going to be the most robust option to choose. That's what you're normally gonna to wanna to choose. Light will only work on features that were created interactively, meaning manually created features. Cancel will do nothing, so you might use cancel if you had just come in and created a sketch or a plane, some sort of reference geometry and not touch the geometry of the part. And then help is there uh, for you guys to reference when you can't remember what I just explained. So I'm gonna do full. Now this is rerunning feature recognition. It's looking at the features we already had in the model and comparing it to new features that it found. When it finds features that may be mismatched, it will warn us. So we have this new screen here. It's saying it found a new multi-stepped hole because I had deleted the old one. And it found this new countersunk hole group. It's asking, does this new countersunk hole group correspond to any of the old features? Because if it did, we can pull in the operation plan for those features automatically. So it's kind of up to me to just figure out which feature corresponds. It's counter sunk whole group 17, and I'm gonna say associate. When I say associate, it's gonna ask, do I want to add this new feature? So now, then I would have two counter sunk whole groups. Do I wanna replace the old one or do I wanna cancel? And in this case, replace. And so now we can see our features have updated. We have new toolpath on that backside. We're good to go. We can also do the same thing by editing the number of features. So if I edited the circular pattern, let's try this other one on the top here. Instead of eight instances, I might do four. And when I hop back over to CamWorks, I'll do the same thing. I'll do a full rebuild. It will notice the change. It may or may not ask me to associate the new features. So the big thing I wanted to do here was to explain that associate window. All it's doing is it's saying, hey, we have old features that are kind of dangling, they're lost. We also have new features. Do any of them correspond? If they don't, like in this case, it's saying we've got an old countersunk whole group 
and a new multi-step toll. Are those associated? No, so we'll just hit cancel. And now notice on this side, instead of eight holes, we have four. Now I'm doing this all in the same configuration. I'm just going back to SolidWorks. I'm making changes to my model and then heading back over to CamWorks. That's not always the workflow that you're using, especially if you are concerned about revision control. If we're worried about revision control, we might have to create a new configuration or a new part file entirely. We can do multiple configurations within SolidWorks as well. So if I were to create a new configuration, we'll say eight hole. And we'll make that slightly different on the SolidWorks side. By suppressing this feature, and recreating it. So now we have two versions of this file. We have the default and the eight hole. So the default now has four holes along the top and the eight hole has eight. Now, because I'm in a different SOLIDWORKS configuration, when I come over to CAMWORKS, it's gonna warn me and say there's a mismatch in configurations, what would I like to do? And in this case, I'm going to copy the old configuration, take all of that CAM data that was for the default part, copy it into the new part and do a full rebuild. Okay, we have some unassociated features here. But now if we look at the toolpath, we have again our eight holes being cut. So we're very easily able to copy CAM data between configurations. All of this CAM data is being saved to the SOLIDWORKS file. So this particular SOLIDWORKS file called differential flange a.sldprt, it actually contains two sets of CAM data, one for each of the SOLIDWORKS configurations that we programmed. If for whatever reason we need our CAM data in separate files, or if we're not going to be using configurations, but we still have very similar parts, we can handle that situation as well. I'm going to switch back over to the default configuration. So what I'm going to do here is save out the cam data separately from the part file using the tools camworks import and export option. Within this menu, I will say export. And I am saving out a .prt cam file, part cam file. This is the cam data alone. I'll go ahead and close that. Now we're assuming here that I had two separate part files and that I wanted to share or import the CAM data from one part file to the next. So I need to create two part files. I'll open the eight hole SOLIDWORKS configuration and use the SOLIDWORKS save bodies option to save out this part as a separate file. So now I have a separate part file. The only item in the SOLIDWORKS feature tree is an imported body, and the CAM data is empty. What I'll do now is import that part CAM file I saved from the last part. When importing, I can choose to delete the existing data or merge with existing data. There's no existing data, so Either choice is okay in this scenario. 
I'll close that and do a light rebuild. What we have here is a part file that's totally separate from the original that's sharing cam data. So it gave us a good start. We saved the cam data out of the configuration that had only four holes, but when we imported it, Camworks picked up the extra holes and it's cutting all eight. So there's some tips and tricks on using SOLIDWORKS configurations alongside CAMWORKS configurations and importing and exporting part CAM data so that you can get CAM data in a separate file. This may be necessary if you're using Enterprise or Workgroup PDM. The last thing I wanted to show is pulling this part file into a SOLIDWORKS assembly and importing the CAM data into the assembly file. One of the advantages of having the assembly file available to us to program in is that we can set up our fixturing, our tables, any sort of probes that we might have. We can tell CamWorks what parts to machine and what parts to avoid, even if we have dozens of parts to machine. In this case, I have an assembly with a six jaw chuck, and I'm going to insert that new part. And made it up to this existing assembly. So now I have an assembly that closely matches the way I would fixture this part on the machine. When I jump over to CamWorks, I'll tell it to machine this part. And then import the data from that part file. After importing, what I have listed to machine are the machinable features from the part that can be accessed from the top of the part. The top of the part is dictated by this coordinate system, the Z direction that I had already created in this assembly. So those features were imported from the part file and I did not have to reprogram the part in assembly mode. The benefit of this is that I can program parts before I know how the fixturing will be done, or I can program parts on an individual basis and then bring them into an assembly with an array of parts to cut. I only have to program the part one time. The last thing I'd want to do is tell CamWorks to avoid the fixtures. In this case, the chuck jaw. So we add them as fixtures, and then CamWorks will recalculate the tool pass if needed. So now we have toolpath on this part. We can be certain that none of the toolpath is interfering with our fixturing. And we have cam data in the SOLIDWORKS assembly file now. And that wraps up this short lunchtime webinar on the CamWorks SOLIDWORKS connection. To quickly review what we covered, we showed using SOLIDWORKS configurations as the CamWorks stock. We showed the associativity between the SOLIDWORKS file and the CamWorks toolpaths. We discussed using SOLIDWORKS configurations alongside CamWorks configurations, importing and exporting CAM data between part files, and importing CAM data from a part file to an assembly file. Thank you again for joining. Please let me know if you have any questions. My name is Tyler Reed with Go Engineer.